Okay, this is my third try at making the next <coughs> step of this uh, uh, tax equity or kind of U.S.-based solar project that, remember, where the assumptions seem kind of interesting when they're given uh, uh, as a torture project to an intern. And in this case, in this uh, 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 video, I'm going to, and I hope I introduce things okay, I'm going to work through the tax elements and essentially come up with the uh, after-tax project IRR. We can call it that, perhaps. But this will assume that all the tax benefits can be used, and it um, shouldn't be utilized, a little horrible, used. And um, later, in order to use those benefits, we have to create this structure where we have a tax equity partner who can use the, use the, the, the benefits and claim, haha, <laughs> the claim that they have a little bit of uh, risk in the project and uh, other developer now so before we get to that stage we better put the taxes together and then by putting the taxes together we're going to make a, a, a compute the depreciation expense and once we have depreciation we take our EBITDA and subtract some depreciation we have our EBIT compute the taxes without any kind of financing. We're going to do that separately. And we have a partnership, a kind of hypothetical uh, 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 partnership that actually pays taxes. The true partnership doesn't pay any taxes, but we want to pretend it does and see what kind of IRRs we get on our overall project. So we can compare this uh, IRR, this unlevered IRR of a whopping 2.82% uh, to uh, <laughs> okay, to an after-tax number. Okay, and, and because of we we're able to immediately get 30% of the CapEx right back in terms of uh, investment tax credit, at least in this example, I'm not it goes up and down. It's 26% or something. Okay. Uh, we can put all those assumptions in. Please, these things move and some of these assumptions change over time. So we're going to work through uh, an analysis and, and get the uh, uh, get the after tax project IRR, excuse me for not getting a word out. I hope it's going to be better than when I tried this yesterday and when I started swearing too much. And oh my gosh, and, uh, I, I had a little bit of jet lag, perhaps. That's my excuse. Okay, so we're going to put the depreciation in. Now, when we put the depreciation in, I hope you hear me complain about the disgusting truly disgusting people who sit there at their little whatever sessions are, Ugh, I'm making a three statement, a three statement uh, 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 financial model, big deal. And then in my three statement financial model, I don't compute the return on invested capital. I don't show any useful statistic. I don't show you why this corresponds to history. I do nothing like that. That's a subject for a different day. But with our depreciation, now I'm calm down again, uh, uh, we are going to uh, compute a three-statement model. And in that three-statement model, there'll be one account that we really care about more than anything else. And that's the equity balance account. And that equity balance for the partnership, including the taxes, can then be split between the two partners. So eventually we'll have a, a balance sheet for the tax equity and a balance sheet for the uh, 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 
how about sponsor? We'll call it a sponsor. Okay. So we're going to put some, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss some issues with uh, uh, tax depreciation. And then we have some little bit of complications. And so I did I get that word out? Did I tell you that these two balance sheets of the, if it's uh, after tax, before any funky little, which is, more extremely important constraints where the tax benefits cannot be realized because we have negative equity on our balance sheet, and that's the inside capital, outside capital, DRO, suspended loss, excess dividends. Oh my gosh, all of that stuff comes from the equity on the balance sheet. But if we compute this partnership balance sheet, and then we have the two Part, the balance sheets for the other two, they better add up and give you the same amount. And eventually, we better really understand that when we're allocating things, it's based on the income. We're going to allocate the balance sheet based on the income, ITC based on the income. And if 99% of the income originally goes to the uh, uh, originally goes to the tax investor, well. They kind of get 90% of the ITC, 90% of the assets, 90% of the depreciation, blah, 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 blah. That's the real allocation is the income allocation. The the cash flow allocations, that's like a different dividend payout kind of thing where you it's not kind of the central for allocation as the as the income allocation to really understand that instead of doing what I did which was so horrible which was to try to take somebody else's model and back engine reverse engineer it and, oh god I was going to say back leverage it I can't say that now so we have this this little thing where we deduct the the ITC and then we pay taxes and the taxes assumed here only have a federal tax rate even though this project i believe was supposed to be in california where they have a significant i believe i have no idea they have it, but they must have some state uh, corporate income tax okay then we have we we kind of have some assets with different categories this first stuff was a bunch of crap really uh, uh, but we essentially, at the end of the day, we don't get ITC on all. Uh, that's investment tax credit. If I didn't define it, that's the a, a tax credit is different than a tax deduction. A tax credit comes straight off of your taxes. So if you we're going to have to pay a hundred taxes, and you you have a tax credit which had deductions in and everything else, you take your earnings before tax multiplied by the tax rate that gives you 100 let's say and then we have a tax credit of 90 the actual taxes you pay are 10. it's a direct deduction a, a reduction a direct credit okay and i think in, in in the future i need to almost make a powerpoint presentation to to, to really go through some terminology before i just dive into this stuff so we don't get it all and then, so we've only got a, a, a few tax inputs. The original one had a had a crap load more, and I just kind of put a put a minus on this. So that that was uh, uh, kind of ridiculous. Maybe I should have pressed this number two here to get it back. Excuse me. Um, the the uh, that was done by. Uh, Shift all right arrow, by the way, to, to hide this stuff. Okay, and then we're down to just a couple more in, in, inputs. And then we have this thing, which I think is, is fascinating that they gave you this. And they say the FMV tax basis step up. And the, I think the person who did this said, ah, what is this? Okay, what is this? There was some kind of question about this one. Okay, and there's also the ITC step up, which is about the same, but presumably is has a little adjustment because you don't get it on the whole thing, something like that. Okay, but that step up, that me, that's an asset write up. 
And I'm going to blab on in this video about whether how that should be treated in many different ways. The most interesting issue is, is this amount reasonable? Can it just kind of put whatever number you want? Why don't we put 200%? And that's of the asset. So if we put a lot more of a step up in there, we get more investment tax credit. We get more tax depreciation. We've got an enormous incentive to make that thing as big as we possibly can. And at 25%, it's a it's a percent of the uh, uh, the total cost of the the asset. So we suddenly get it. <laughs> What's going on here? Well, it happens to be really, when you really start to think about the theory of this, it happens to be a fascinating question. So let's get to the, let's get to some of this modeling. Now, the first thing to do is this, this uh, uh, um, uh, tax depreciation rate is called we call it makers. <laughs> that makes me quiver because I remember when it was ACRS without the M, that was called the Accelerated Cost Recovery System, ACRS. And then you put an M in front of it when they went too far in the 80s. You know, this was Reagan and Bush and all that stuff. And uh, 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 they called it Modified uh, Accelerated Cost Recovery System. Okay, but we have to prove that we can abbreviate it. Now, I put VDB. Now, uh, uh, what the poor intern did was went through and, and, and went to the Internet and searched for it and got these rates. Okay, these rates. And they better be adding up to 100. In fact, I should have really uh, uh, inserted a, a, a column and put it. And we've got 100 down here. Okay. And that, then he did the same for 15 years and was very proud of it and all that. Now, you can do this yourself, and we get a, a, a touch different answer. And I think right now I, I need to put the fact that the, the uh, uh, I'll call it declining balance factor. Now, you could, what you can do is essentially say, okay, if we have a, five-year uh, uh, asset, which this is five, the depreciation rate would be one divided by five, 20 percent, and if it's double declining balance, which that's what we used to call it, we put two here, and, and uh, 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 we could compute it. But then you have to get to the end and make sure you, you can't keep doing that because it, eventually it just keeps... The next period and is, is is a little trickier uh, 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 because you've got a, de a balance declining and you want to finish this off, so you got to switch to straight lines. So luckily, there's a VDB VDB function in Excel, and for the cost, I put one. Let's get a rate for the salvage. You put zero. There's no in 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 the tax terms. There's nothing like this. And then you press the uh, 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 life in there and before you had the years and it screwed me up and I was screaming. And then we put the start and the end. So this putting a zero in is always a pain for me. And then you can put this and do it with a double declining balance or anything else. And you can use this for kind of modeling a decline rate on an oil field or something like that. Very bad to say that I would ever look at this. And then, oh, okay, I don't have the generic macros open and I don't even have it have it uh, a link there because I probably had some problems so every time I'm doing this I'm I'm gonna go through some of these uh, generic macros things I don't know I've blabbed on too much now to to interrupt too much and then we'll pr on this one here's what you do if it goes into service and perhaps what you really should do is say it, this is for a full year rate. Now, if it, I think the, the, I can't remember these people who so think that they're so great and charge these enormous fees for this complicated crap. Say, if it goes in before the middle of the year, before one July, that then it gets the full year rate. But if it goes in afterwards, 
it gets a half year rate. So the half year rate is just this divided by two. But then when we go to the next one, we have to take the other part of this divided by two plus this divided by two. And eventually you get to six years. And this rate in the first two years, it's, it's the same. And the third year, it's the same. And then when it goes to the straight line, it's, it's very slightly different. I can't explain that. Remember, now we, we have this, by the way, and if you press, uh, let's do a generic macro bullshit. Uh, 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 right now, if you go to the default values, uh, I think uh, 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 this is in the generic uh, macros file, uh, where th this is the color of the inputs, and why uh, uh, did I not have this? Just a minute, I'm going to copy this the uh, and and met the, the this one uh, 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 let's do it as a this okay and so now that's going to be our our default and i didn't save it last time so we initialize it so if you want those kind of things you can just uh, here we've got it and uh, did I have anything on the top on this one? Uh, let, let's put three rows on the top. And this is what I started to... Ooh, why is my computer... Because I spilled a bunch of stuff on the plane, maybe. Uh, 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 maybe that's why I can't get it to work properly. Okay, and we don't want a sum column. And the rest is okay. And it's going to show us where we took... Uh, 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 things from another thing, and if you want to waste a whole lot of time on uh, where what happened to the zero and the one, uh, but oh, the, these uh, these were inputs, so I, I better put uh, equal this one, and how about equal this plus one, and then we can really quickly redo it, okay. I'm just doing this. I don't know why. I'm sick of it anyway. Okay. And. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, uh, just a second. Ah, uh, just a second. The whole point of this was to show you how we. Uh, uh, how we can redo this. So this had to take this one down here. I can't even remember this little stupid program I wrote. Okay. Okay. Now we've got the. Ah, uh, no. Oh, no. Damn. Okay, I needed to put that little gray thing in here. Oh, this is, this, I'm sure. Oh, no, I'm going to get a bunch of negative things now because I'm wasting time on this, this thing, and I don't show how fast it is. There, finally, we got it, okay? And maybe one day I should put, because it, apparently this is really important to the bank, is how you format these inputs, uh, uh, you know. So these, of course, are, aren't, uh, the, these things are, are calculations. So now let's go and implement this. And remember, where we left off, we had, for the P50 case, the 2.2, and we put all of our, uh, 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 generation and our merchant uh, prices in, and I probably could have done a heck of a lot better, and I'll do it later discussing these corporate PPAs and the real exposure and the real risk you have to some merchant price fluctuations because a P99 for one year is so completely and irrelevant to the hour by hour P99, which is really what you want. If you wanted to protect yourself, it's just a total arbitrary number if you take a P99 for a year and apply it to an hour. Ridiculous in these corporate PPAs, but you need to understand why it is. So we start with our, our timing, and then I think it's if you're going to transfer some variables, put them right at the beginning. And all we needed here really was the EBITDA and the CapEx. That's what drives everything. And the EBITDA has revenues and operating expenses. It's always those three things. No working capital here. And then it's a really important flag for the date the ITC occurs. And I almost suggest, and I, I'm not going to do this for one reason, because I'm going to start messing around with the stupid generic macros again. 
I, I almost should put that right up here because we're going to use that over and over again. And we have this uh, sum, and we take this sum, and we put it here, and we put the date at the end of the, the this is going to be the COD date, but at the very end of that quarter, that's where you take the, the ITC and everything with the XIRR, blah, blah, blah. It's at the end of the quarter. So we've got a little bit of a flag here. Again, that's with the generic macros. We put the total cost in here. Which, so I, I say get it from the sum. Don't be such a snob. And then just multiply it by the flag. And don't put all those flags in a different timing sheet. Just after you've done this for a long time, I tell uh, my students, I really do teach real classes. You know, I took, taught for three weeks in Malaysia. It was great. I loved it. <sighs> okay. And... Uh, 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 I tell them my mo only skill is to have made every mistake so many times it's ridiculous. And then you come up with a way to do these things and you keep trying. And one of the worst things in the world, I'm babbling on, is to make template models that you never change because you'll never improve. So you take that, uh, that, that number we computed above, multiply it by the 96% and take the 30% ITC, which is a little bit different today and don't yell at me oh it's all 26 percent screw you and then we're going to write that up and that's the big issue really with the development fee we're just going to say okay federal government instead of this uh uh, uh, uh being 30 percent i'm going to get an extra 20 20 percent of this and uh okay that's the basis and then we've got the itc if this was if, if you want to just temporarily do these kind of things, Hedy does this. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, uh, this should be uh, whatever, minus 0.2, okay? If this was minus 0.2, we get this much ITC. So by stepping it up, we get how much? We, we, we get uh, uh, about 20 million more immediate tax savings and that's i think a big deal and the question that i'm going to address in just a minute is that once you understand the theory of a development fee and you see if this you could either the, the basic way to look at it which is kind of obvious perhaps is that you can say i can pay an external developer for this and i'm going to pay that developer a big bonus that developer is not going to sit there and and put his her sweat equity into these transactions and lose money for nine out of ten transactions and finally get one that work and just say okay on the one single one that works just pay me for my my my, my costs I don't really need a profit you you can't have that the developer will get a big premium of course when he sells it or her she sells it sorry. And when they, you sell it, how can you not have to pay tax on that? You get a big, it's like a lottery winning or something. You get a big amount of money in your pocket. And unfortunately, you have to pay taxes. You might uh, 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 suggest, well, we, 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 we had a bunch of failures. So the actual taxes, if we do some blah, 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 might be less. But if you're having your own company, it's exactly the same thing exactly the same thing and how can you say this uh, uh this fee we're getting is not taxable and that's what we're going to address and then we have this tax basis reduction which just says okay when we compute our depreciation we got we got to do it less now <sighs> the okay okay uh uh we should, because of this little 50% uh, uh, reduction in, not a little, but because of this 50% reduction in the tax basis, we better, uh, uh, we better do our ITC or, or model the ITC before the tax depreciation. And then, of course, please, I'm going to just have to cry for a minute because you, I don't know if you remember the other the other kind of thing from from last time but there were a bunch of lookups with if statements and all this stuff if it, let's just redo this because this this one it actually i i looked up looked up if okay 
this time I'm going to look at the, the age in, in, in years, okay, uh, uh, and get the annual depreciation, and then we're going to divide it by quarters and four, and we should put a range name that says quarters, and I didn't do that, okay. We have the lookup, and then we go to the uh, tax inputs, keep those kind of separate, and click on the whole line here and then this time I'm going to click on this one I forgot if I had done this but we don't get to take any depreciation until we have our operation so that's why it's so essential to keep those things up at the top and uh, uh, one other thing I should tell you if we want to just count how old you are in quarters so it, it, this this shouldn't say life in quarters this should say age uh, and maybe I had him do it like this. And then once we have the age in quarters, this is very bad to use the four here. So, okay, what we should have done here is, you know, put how many uh, uh, quarters there are per year. And let's do that just so you, you, the auditors don't start uh, uh, complaining. I'm not going to do the, the stupid generic macros again. Okay. And you could even put months in here. And it's a remarkable fact uh, 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 that there are four. Even every year probably has four. Every year since we started counting years, I don't know when we counted years, and now we'll just select these two, shift control F3, and get that quarter. So when we do this one, uh, 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 the, the, uh, we'll take the, excuse me, okay, yes, we'll take the, 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 Huh, the, how we're counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, these are just the number of quarters. Now, 1 divided by 4 is 0. 0.25, 2 divided by 4 is 0. 0.5, 4 divided by 4 is 1. We take that 1, round it up, it's still 1. Take this uh, 0. 0.25, round it up, it's 1. But when you get to 5, you round up to 5, and the 5 divided by 4 is 1.25. That rounded up is not 1, it's 2. So we round up. That's the little trick, and we better put up here... Uh, quarters and I don't know what that other range name is I thought I got rid of all the range names before there were a ton of different BS range names in here and oh yeah there's still some crap in here I have no idea people will tell me I see these sometimes in, in the models let's get rid of this junk and what's this crap here Okay, oh my gosh, what is all this junk? Okay, and that just messes this the things up. I don't know why that, that thing kind of appears. Okay, I don't want to delete the quarters I just put in. Okay, so you can just work through. That's control F3, shift control F3, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's our life, and that's the one we used for the lookup. And then we take that one and divide it by quarters. Okay, good. It doesn't have some other junk. It, 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 there was something else in there, though. Okay, and then we have our, our write-up. And our write-up is, uh, uh, is the amount of pure the, 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 the capex. And that's what we did kind of at the beginning here somewhere. This is the total tax basis at COD. And I, let's be a little more clear without write-up. Okay, and that's, I'm focusing a little more on the write-up than I certainly would normally uh, do. And then, so we have that, and then, of course, we, uh, I never say of course. Okay, and then we take that one plus this one, so we, this gives the, the, the total tax basis including the write-up and then we just accumulate it that's just going backwards one and accumulating it okay perhaps a little underline here and i don't know why you guys all hate that underline where you take the top and the bottom i like that much better than those other ones whatever who cares okay and then we have our uh, uh, tax depreciation and we 
uh, uh, that the, we only have a percent of this for uh, uh, whatever 96 percent of it is is gets the five year and uh, we take half of the tax basis away shift control v for victor oops uh, i can't do that because uh, 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 because I, that I, I accumulated that, and I took all the 50% of the ITC and put it here. That's our number. Excuse me for that. And then uh, tax maybe shift control V here for Victor. That should work. Okay, so that's our final tax depreciation, and it's it's reduced by the tax basis of the plant. And if you whatever, if you took the total tax basis minus this you could do a little check on that and, and this won't get colored it won't get colored until you run the generic macros again okay but as soon as you run the generic macros it takes one minute and you do that and the reason i did the generic macros is so you don't waste time on the coloring you seem to still waste too much time on it and then we do almost the same thing for the 15 years uh, uh, and that again it looks up on the age in years and all of that, and then finally we have the, the the total tax depreciation, which is a combination of both of them. And then we can start doing a little work, and we put our EBITDA in that we got from above, and every single thing has a very simple formula, please, and you can press F2 and find everything, and then we can take our hypothetical taxes, the reason it's hypothetical taxes, as if you get the benefit and you get some negative taxes here whilst the, the, the depreciation is happening and then it goes to positive and that's why you get the, 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 the tax equity investor. But the real big thing is in the very first year. So you get this a, a really big tax break in the first year and then some tax breaks uh, uh, later on. You get some negative taxes and that's why you flip it around. Okay. And you want to sell those tax breaks. It's like selling a, 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 an unruly a, a deduction for your unruly teenager. Now, the problem is this: you, if you sell your teenager, you can't really do that. I don't know, but, but you'd sell it for tax purposes. If you just say, "Ah, take my tax break on my teenager," but I still have to keep all the risks associated with my teenager. Eh, the government doesn't kind of like that. You're not allowed to do that because then all the rich people would take the deductions and the poor people like me would just say, okay, I want some extra money for, 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 for my, my teenager. Now, uh, uh, so now we're going to do the, no, before we do this three statement modeling, I want to talk about this development fee. And I put some numbers in here, and the only reason these numbers are in here, this was horrible in my class. I said, what do you remember from my week-long class? And they said, I can't do it now. I cannot make it small. Uh, uh, I remember to make A, B, and C small. They just did that to really make me cry. Okay, we have the development cost. Control and square bracket to get to the development cost. Somewhere down here, that's the development cost right here. That control and square bracket doesn't properly work for lookup. Remember, I said that, that, and then you press F5 to get back here. Okay, and then the development fee itself, that comes from here. Okay, that's the fee. Now, why, you know, this is a arbitrary number. What does it really mean? Now, the exciting part for me, and I really want to be able to explain this, and I'm going to have another video just working through it. When you value an asset, you know, if you really step back and think about it, the only way, the development asset, when you think about spending this money, this money up front, there's a good chance that it's going to not work. If, let's pretend for now it's a bidding situation, so there are four bidders for some reason, that's not the case here. But if there are four, uh, uh, how about there are five bidders? And you get one chance in five of winning. Let's say it's just kind of a coin toss almost. Okay? So what you would do, uh, th that wouldn't be a very profitable thing to do because 
if you think about it, if you had exactly the same type of projects, you'd have five losses, four losses for every game. So in this case, but so I, I'm going to pretend that we have the probability of failure is equal to one divided by four. And the, oops, the probably, yes, the probability of success, excuse me, is equal to one divided by four. And then if it's if we win, we still have to pay this cost, but we get this development fee. And screw the screw the NPVs right now. The NPVs are almost they're just meaningless. Putting a little cost of money in there compared to the the real risk you're taking, which is having a 75% chance of a failure. And that's what they think about a bank. That's what they do. The probability of, of a default is how they value things and how they figure out the, 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 the value of a loan. And then we can multiply like a weighted average, the, 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 the value times this. Okay. And then our total value we receive is this. And we, pay a development fee I mean we pay off we, we pay our money so we get a little bit of a profit on that fine okay and when we do that uh, 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 when we do that then okay that's enough to make a little bit of a profit if the probability of success was only 10 percent then we'd make a, a loss because we have nine projects that don't work. So if we go over here and put this back to, uh, uh, let's put this back to 25%. I did a little alt EIS. I've practiced this before because I made a, a, a video of it. Uh, if we did that, then there, there would be a, We'd, we'd still have to always pay this out for all of our five projects, but for one of them, we get a profit, okay? And the, that profit we get is equal to, uh, is we can take that profit and divide it by the cost, okay? And then we get that, and then we can say, oh, what, what am I doing? Okay, the, this is the... Uh, uh, probability. So this ratio you have of the, excuse me for babbling on and not getting this really, really clearly laid out, but it's one of the most important ideas, not at all in project finance, but in, in any kind of financing, understanding that there's a, there's a time when NPV, IRRs, screw them all. They don't work. Probabilities work. And then what you really want to do is when you make your final valuation, okay, you're gonna you're gonna say, okay, well, here's our cash flow, and we'll have a, a period. Maybe we'll I'll just put it one time. We'll have a minus on the uh, uh, development cost, okay, and then. Uh, uh, at some point, we get a profit. At, at some point, we get this development feedback. Now, if you would put uh, here IRR, that's kind of ridiculous. And you can say, oh, that's kind of like a discount rate you need. That, what, how ridiculous would that be? That's a meaningless kind of a thing, except it's close to the five, maybe, or something like that. Who cares? And then after that, but then you, if you, if you're continuing the, 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 the let's call this valuation uh, uh, development, and then we'll have a valuation for our operations. And, and what we can do here is we can start over in the next period and say, okay, this amount of development fee we paid is like a negative. So we have a negative on this, and we have a, a negative on this. That's a real cost. It's an economic cost. And then what kind of profit do we need? In And, and so, so let's say then we have a construction period. Let's just make it annual of, of one, and let's let's get our the rest of our construction, and uh, do I have that? Uh, 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 hopefully, 
here, okay, that's how, how about the, the, the capital expenditures excluding development is this. So, so then we have a negative amount here, okay, that's, we need to include this as a cost because we're saying somewhere in another spreadsheet, we have five other spreadsheets where we didn't earn it. And so the true earnings we actually get are this. So let's say we make, uh, I don't know, we have 300, uh, uh, let's say we make 50,000. And let's say we just put this over here. Okay, so our IRR, uh, uh, our project in this case our project IRR oops oh we can't do it perhaps let's see if we can do it uh, this was a negative amount anyway I, I didn't mean to make it a positive phew I was afraid we'd have our IRR problem, which is this fantastic discovery. People think, oh, we can't do that. How about this? Let, let's just put an equal sign on this and shift control. Oh, oh shit. Oh, God damn it. Okay, sorry about that. I'm not even telling you what happened. I didn't have my little numbers on the top. That IRR might be too high. Let's say we, we put it to 40,000. Okay, that's uh, maybe 45,000. Okay, that's kind of the IRR on the project. Oh, that's still a little too high. Let's make it 40,000. Ah, 41,000. How's that? Whoops, this didn't continue. Maybe that's why. Okay, about 7%. Now, if when we do this kind of analysis where we really, if we if we would take this development fee and and, and, and take it away, we get a much we we get a very different IRR. But this IRR, if you bought the project for somebody else, you would have had to pay this fee. That's where it all comes from. Now the the, the one of the big lessons here is, of course, if you're not if it's not a bidding situation and you're just getting permits and blah 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 and you've spent some money but not all of it that this might be the amount you actually have to spend might be half you can do all these stages and steps and get an option to get out of the project at different times i'm assuming you have to go all the way to the end of the development to get it this 14 million 700 and if the true probability of success is is 50 percent then we're making a, a, a an excessive amount of profit on the development fee we're basically we're 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 we're, 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 we're saying it's as if it it's it's about one in five times that we succeed when in fact if it's one in two times you succeed that's way too much. And then the write-up will be too much. And somebody should not allow you to pay, just like you'd pay an external developer, you're not going to pay them just an ex extra amount because somebody else will say, no, 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 I'll come and do it. I'll get a lower fee because I just want to recover my cost plus a little profit. Blah, 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 blah. So just coming up with some arbitrary number is a really dangerous kind of thing to do. So, but that's a real cost. That's my point, really. The point is that that's a real cost. And the true IRR is this 8.62 because it accounts for the, 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 the uh, probability and this big risk uh, in doing this. So if now we say, okay, let's put a discount rate in here. And let's say the discount rate is... 5%, then we can put a, a, a value of our project and we can get the value in each year as NPV of, 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 of this one and we go forward once all the time. And, and this is the, the value of our project, blah, 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 this one. And let's kind of carry this forward now. And then we can see what happens to the value of the project over time. Uh, uh, 
And if we want to do a quick alternate F1, maybe we can show. And that project goes down. It went up. It was never, neg never negative. And uh, uh, that's that now we're switching from a project valuation. Now, if you did this valuation without, let's uh, cut this thing. If you did this valuation without the development fee, I know this is confusing as hell. It really is, and I'm sorry to go through it, but it's a little more interesting than a three statement uh, model that I'm going to be doing in just a second. And if we multiply that by zero, then we get a, 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 a higher, we get a higher value, at least in the, the, the first ones, okay? And uh, uh, which is inappropriate because that's a, that's a real kind of risk. If we put a, 7% uh, 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 discount rate, then we get a, which is lower than this. That's what we're kind of doing is we, we want to be able to sell this project. And let's say we sell it. Uh, 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 let's say the, the sell in year three. Okay. After we've kind of proven to it. Now, if you sell it in year three, what happens is you, you get this stuff up to year three, you get the cash flows. And then in year three, you get the the sale proceeds, and then you get a a, a sum. Okay, I, I could have used alternate equal, and then we get our true IRR. This is the re true IRR you're going to get, which is uh, uh, okay, and and it's this thing. It's twenty five percent. Okay. If this was 6%, oh, we still got a whole bunch. If this was 10%, uh, uh, then we, it, that's, we, we start with the, the whole kind of thing. So that, enough of that. That's our valuation. And uh, uh, the IRR, we actually really achieve is only this much, but we can get a much, much higher. I'll just stop there. I'll stop there. And then you can say, well, what happens if if this thing is really low? What happens if this is 30,000? And then we only get a 2% IRR, uh, but without the, 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 the thing, we get a 5% IRR. So I'm going to have to lower it even more. I'm going to lower it to 20,000. Okay, and then this IRR that we're achieving is even worse than selling. So you wouldn't, you basically wouldn't sell it. You just hold it to keep the IRR to the end. But at least you have the option to do that. Enough of that little development fee introduction, but it's it's becoming my kind of really. It's got so many implications for startup companies, for McDonald's building a new, I can't call it a restaurant. What would you call those things where you're going to eat that stuff? Uh, uh, that's got risks the first time you make it. Who knows if it's going to work? And then eventually that risk declines, and that's that's how all this stuff works. Okay, and I'm, I'm messing around with it during the video. Now we're going to make our three-statement model. To make our three-statement model, we have to do something with the ITC. What is the ITC? Is it a government grant? So should we put it as a, 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 a like almost an equity to the government? Well, they don't really get anything for it. Or is it a reduction in the cost of the asset? So should you should you subtract it from the asset balance? It really doesn't matter. Either way you do it, you're going to have to recognize that as income one time or another. You don't have to recognize it as taxable income. But just for making your three statement model, you're going to do that. So what I did here is I put the ITC in, and then I did a straight line reduction and I'm going to treat it the way we used to treat the ITC on a on a balance sheet back in the seven. seven oh, I shouldn't admit that's too old. 80s. How's that? How's that? There used to be it in the 80s and, and, and we used to call it deferred ITC and we amortize it to income eventually. So this uh, amortization that's that's uh, 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 to income and then we have this 50 percent deduction problem now now <laughs> in the earlier video I walked through this step by step by step we first start with our uh, 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 
EBITDA, take the, the depreciation away, we get our EBIT, then this is the big issue. And I talked to my friend, well, I don't know, call him a friend, Pascal, he was, oh, no, no, in my model, they're making me, they're making me take a taxable item on that. Those horrible tax people, oh, my God. Well, how could you not, how could it not be taxable, really, if you get away with not calling it taxable? Good for you. So I'm calling that as part of the basis for the earnings before tax. And then we multiply that one. So we, we've got this development fee up here, which is the one I just babbled about. And then we take our earnings before taxes. We have a negative in the next years. And then we take the taxes on our earnings. And then we have the earnings before the 50% the, the write down. What do you do with this stupid write down? You know, we got to take, we got, we, we spent that money, the capital expenditures, they're made in a original cost balance sheet. They're going to be accumulated. What are you going to do with that, that reduction? So it's, it's not just sitting there forever. So what you're going to have to do is almost, it's almost like you have to take a loss. You almost have to write off, write off that asset. You could, I suppose, do it other ways, but it's got to come off the income statement one way, just like depreciation. So I just took it in the first year. And the reason I took it in the first year is when we look at the balance sheet splits later on, that's exactly what you do with the, the partnership splits. In fact, I hope I'm going to do this. If you go down to here and go to the tax equity and go to the capital accounts, and let's go to the inside basis, 704B or whatever it is. Oh, good. You can say that 704B really well. I've got a bunch of little examples. That's not my own. There's, safe, there's a picture of a safe harbor, and I try to put just just blab some of this stuff in here. But the... the uh, 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 <laughs> where's the... the, the, the the book income uh, 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 plus the 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 capital. The, oh, I'm sorry, the tax investor. Where in the hell is the less the 50% step up? This is the, the this is that uh, thing. Let's find another one. Uh, no, that's not it. That was something different. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 we we have to put this uh, shoot there has to be in here there's the there's the itc basis reduction that's some, somewhere that itc basis reduction should be in all of these things okay i'm not sure why i'm not seeing it in a couple of these if it's wrong but that's where it it, it definitely should be there and uh, okay you can look at it, but it better it better be there. These are just some excerpts from some some uh, 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 some some real uh, 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 models. Oh my God! It better be there. Okay. Oh, that was a little bit bad. But um, so we've got to do something with that. That's why you're going to see that somewhere. Okay. Maybe it's in the. Uh, outside basis too okay and then we put our amortization in of the itc and we get our income these two things had no effect on the taxes so but we still they had still effect on an income and then when we go oops there's some background sorry there's cars and planes and everything okay there's some EBITDA that we come in then we take our taxes add the ITC, that's our cash flow. We have some CapEx, so that's like our operating cash flow, our investing cash flow, net cash flow. And for our simple little partnership, we've got to get the, we put an equity in that, that later, that's like back leverage and all that. Uh, we can even say it's like a, a, um, a, a equity bridge loan kind of thing. You get the financing from somewhere else. You can stick that on the balance sheets of the, of the, partners which i don't think you really should do you, you just just keep those as equity for, for the first time so that's the amount we put in that's the amount we get back and then we put our balance sheet together and our balance sheet has to have this horrible 50 percent deduction in otherwise 
the, the, the net assets don't go down to zero and then you accumulate the depreciation and, and you get your net assets. And then the question is, will your balance sheet balance? Well, the first thing you can do is put your unamortized investment tax credit, stick that on the balance sheet, and then you get to the thing that you really care about, which is the equity balance. I almost should move that over one, but I'm not going to. We have an opening balance. We add the paid-in capital. That's the amount we put in on the cash flow statement just up here. That's how much we put in. We... Uh, 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 we add the uh, uh, we we add the income, but take that income before all this business of the 50% reduction and all that. Now, if you put the 50% reduction in the income, then you wouldn't have to put it separately, and then you take away the dividends, and you also uh, 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 need to, you also take out the amortization of the ITC because the amortization of the ITC is up here. So that's our equity balance. And that equity balance will form such an important basis for everything else. And then the good news is we put a little test in and make sure that assets equal the liabilities and capital. So the assets are up here, the net assets. And then you take the difference, and it's zero, and then you get a test. And that's our three-statement model. It's a little bit harder than some other three-statement models, and it's crucial to kind of get that set up if you want to do some careful analysis of the exposure and the DROs and all the rest of it. And unfortunately, I'm going to make some other videos where I go through that thing because I'm just practicing this now and I started it and I can't really stop it anymore and that's enough torture for this video and I went on way too long but at least it's less than